We are now at the last step of our survey research cycle. So let's ask ourselves the last relevant question. How can we interpret and communicate our results? To answer this question, we need actually to go back to the first step of our survey research cycle. That was the definition of the research model. As you remember, we started from our research objectives. Then we developed our research framework, consisting in constructs and relationships. And finally, we formulated our hypothesis regarding such relationships. We are using survey research for theory testing purposes. So now that we have collected our data and performed our analysis and tested our hypothesis, we can therefore interpret our results going back to the theory that we want to test. Remember that we formulated our hypothesis starting from academic literature, that is from previous research and established theory. Therefore, we need to interpret our results comparing them with the same literature from which we started. If our hypotheses are confirmed and therefore our results confirm the original theory, this means that we are providing empirical support for our theory and we can generalize its validity. Often the theory we want to test has been developed through a theory building process often based on a qualitative study and on a limited sample. Therefore, the purpose of our survey is indeed to generalize the theory. This is the reason why it is so important to ensure the statistical representativeness of our sample, because in this way we can conclude that our results are valid for the entire population. Sometimes we start from a theory developed in a different context, for example, in a different industry or a different geography. And therefore, our results allow to extend the theory to a different or broader context. Accepting our hypothesis, however, does not mean that we just conclude the work saying we confirm our theory and that's it. We need to discuss and argument our results. We need to recall the original literature from where we started to provide an explanation and an interpretation of the results. Our analysis usually provide us with several information. The magnitude of the coefficient, the level of significance, the overall fit of the model, and so on. We need to exploit this information to develop further explanation. Let's recall the example we have seen in the previous lecture about the impact of supplier assessment, supplier collaboration, and supply-based redesign on performance. If we hypothesize that all three independent variables had a positive impact on performance, and our results confirm that the three relationships are positive and significant, we are also interested in comparing the magnitude of the three beta coefficients to understand if there are differences, and in case which one is greater. This also needs to be compared with previous literature and discussed in its implications. But what shall we do if instead our hypotheses are rejected? This is actually also a very important and interesting result. Actually, this may be even more interesting in some cases because we are obtaining unexpected results which contradict our initial theory and previous literature. Of course, we need to be confident about the whole survey research process, from the beginning to the end, in order to be able to conclude that indeed our initial theory and hypothesis are not confirmed, at least not completely. Going back to our previous example, let's assume that supplier assessment has no significant impact on performance, and therefore our hypothesis is rejected. The other two relationships instead are positive and significant and therefore those hypotheses are supported. In this case, we are only partially confirming our initial expectations, but this provides useful and interesting insights anyway. On the one hand, we confirm that supplier collaboration and supply-based redesign have a positive impact on performance 
and therefore are valid and recommended practices to adopt. On the other hand, supplier assessment is not showing any impact on performance, which contradicts our expectations based on previous literature. Therefore, we need to look for alternative explanations. This may be due to different ways of defining and measuring our variables compared to previous studies, or to different sampling criteria. In this case, we need to be careful in comparing results because we have introduced other factors. If instead the measure and the sample are the same, another possible explanation could be that we have considered multiple variables simultaneously, and therefore the impact on performance is actually explained by the others. In terms of interpretation, this would mean that assessing suppliers does not provide per se a direct improvement in performance. However, this does not mean that it is a bad thing to do. It can still provide other benefits, such as reducing risk related to suppliers, for example. But companies should not expect a direct improvement in performance just because they assess suppliers. Concluding, no matter if our hypotheses are confirmed or not, our results can provide interesting and useful insights that need to be discussed and interpreted by comparing them with previous research. They also open up new questions and suggestions for future research, so we can start again the research cycle. I hope that this course will help you developing your thesis and your research project, and may be useful in your academic and professional career. Thank you for your attention, it was a pleasure for me. Goodbye and good luck.